It's a privilege to be here with Shauna Levine, who is um, a young woman from Muncie, who may be the first uh, woman to come out as a lesbian in Muncie. And, and remain from. And remain <laughs> from. And um, I, I want to get a sense of your situation. What, what, what has been, um, how do you think about your past and your present and your future? I would say that my present has been okay. There's been ups and downs. Um, my past was a little rockier, but ended up okay. And my future, I don't know if I have a future right now. Um, what do you mean by that? I mean that if things stay the way that they are right yeah. now in the Orthodox community, my future as a um, religious mother and partner of somebody in our community um, is not guaranteed in any capacity. So in this climate, it's probably very difficult to come out in the Orthodox community, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, it's actually very important to come out. Um, you know, oftentimes people feel like they're doing wrong or they're made to feel like they're, they're expressing something problematic. But I think on a number of levels, and tell me if you agree, it's very important. Firstly, from Jewish values perspective, uh, that we don't believe in sheker and lies, a culture of lies, that to move sheker to MS, to move from a culture of lies to truth, that no, I can't pretend I'm interested in the opposite sex. I can't pretend I want a shidduch. I can't pretend that um, I, I fit into certain norms. Yeah. And so to transition to, to that uh, is very important. Um, and that young kids, uh, young kids, when they're in a safe culture, should feel uh, like they can um, uh, come out and they should be celebrated for doing so. So that's the first. The second is that I imagine there's a lot of shame to live in the closet Absolutely. in a way that's deeply painful. Uh, thirdly, it, feel, it seems to me that once one comes out, they can get the mental health resources and support they need, not only from peers, but also from mental health professionals uh, to make sure that they're safe. And fourthly, it's my understanding that um, there's a number of more risky behaviors yeah. one will engage in, um, and is, it's a pikuach nefesh issue, a saving life issue, that, that one can be at risk if they have not yet come out. Is it, th uh, does this resonate with you? Absolutely. Um, youth who are in rejecting families and communities are 8.4 times more likely to attempt suicide or be depressed or self-harm, and with every instance of... Um, phobia or aggression that they encounter, it just goes up and up and up, these numbers. Um, it's really scary, and it's absolutely pikuach nefesh. This is saving the lives of these LGBTQ youth who are living in the closet with all this shame and anxiety and terror, you know, terror. They're terrified. Yeah, wow. You know, it used to be the average age of coming out was around 24. Right. And now if it's around 16, mm -hmm. um, the younger uh, a person is, the more difficult it is to grapple with that terror you're talking about. And so I actually think it's a mitzvah to come out. Uh, it's a mitzvah because of all these reasons we've talked about, to move you know, a, a, the, the culture of lies to a culture of truth, to, to address the shame, to get mental health resources one needs, and, um, and to be engaged in less risky behavior. Of course, as long as you're safe as and long you're as in a position safe. to do yes. so. So that's, that, that's the closing uh, conversation I want to have is how do we build those safe communities? How do we ensure that our synagogues, but even let's start with schools first, mm -hmm. what would it look like for our schools to be prepared to handle um, our kids, uh, our Orthodox kids in coming out? What are some right. steps they might take? So let's imagine that there's an Orthodox day school or yeshiva or a base Yaakov or a high school um, and you have a ninth grader or 10th grader who comes out. So imagine the difference between a school that has had administration that has instituted policies that protect their LGBTQ students that say, if an LGBTQ student comes out, they're not gonna be expelled, they're not gonna be suspended. Um, policies that protect students from teachers saying homophobic remarks. Um, from students saying homophobic remarks or transphobic remarks to each other. Um, imagine what it would be like if teachers had 
sensitivity trainings that were both LGBTQ affirming and Orthodox affirming, um, and know what to do in the classroom, what to do when a child comes out to you, um, where can I send a child to access resources that will help them. There are already resources in the community. There's already JQI, Jewish Queer Youth, which is an organization that provides support for um, mm -hmm. LGBTQ youth um, and there's support groups, there's a drop-in center in New York City, there's in a Facebook group and an email listserv for teens um, and for up to age 30. And just imagine what it would be like if schools took the time mm -hmm. to call up JQI and say, how can our schools get better? You know, um, there's an organization called Eshel that has a parents Shabbaton, mm -hmm. where parents of LGBTQ wow. children yeah. get together and talk about what it's like. Um, and there's a parents call where, where parents can talk about um, you know, this, the struggles and the pain and, this, and the celebration, too, mm -hmm. of their children with each other. Um, and that's so important. So institutions, schools need to um, access the resources that already exist and buy into them, right? Like, make sure that the mental health workers in the schools are trained, the teachers are trained, the administration is trained. Um, make sure that there is, make sure that all all barriers to inclusion for LGBTQ youth that have nothing to do with halakha, right. all of those need to be removed. Right, right. All of those need to be gone. And I think that there's some basic education as to what halakha is. Yes. In the sense that um, the whole issue has kind of been kind of packaged together. Whereas I think you're exactly right. There's a lot of non-halakhic barriers that we have to remove for inclusivity. Uh, and how crucial it is. And it's going to be done differently in different schools and different synagogues. I'm from a more modern Orthodox community. It sounds like you come from a more yeshivish community. Right. And there's going to be different approaches in those kind of schools. And um, these organizations looking to counsel are not looking to push or persuade. They are wonderful resources for parents, for rabbis, for educators, for youth to be um, supported in this difficult process. So um, anything you want to leave, you want to leave people with? I think it's important for people who are allies, right, rabbis, educators, even just, you know, lay people to be public about their support. So often you have a LGBTQ young person who comes out to somebody in private and in private they're so nice and right. so wonderful yes. and so accepting and then as soon as they leave the doors of that room, it stops. And so that creates a dissonance for that child that they're accepted in this room and it creates a, a codependency also. But as soon as they leave, things aren't safe anymore. Yeah. And unless there's public support, then there's no sustainable policies that include LGBTQ children. Mm -hmm. So it's it's hard, but you know, we're all talking about this like in private, right? Every rabbinic group, every shul, every school is having conversations about LGBTQ people. Um, but everyone's afraid to like be the first one, but you're really, really not alone. And this is teamwork and LGBTQ um, adults and these resources want to help uh, want to help everyone get there. This is teamwork, this is collaboration. We just wanna make um, our communities a safer, more celebratory place for LGBTQ youth and people. Yeah, I wanna leave the, the rabbis, the educators, the parents, the youth with a little bracha mm -hmm. that we should have the courage to be public the courage to be public to ensure that our youth can be safe, that our youth can live with, with MS, can live lives of truth, um, can, can live a life with absence of, of, of shame, um, an absence of being forced into more risky behavior. And I think what Sean has demonstrated and, and these wonderful organizations she mentioned are now emerging to support us in this journey that we weren't always able to do in the past. And so now is the time to cultivate that courage and I just wish you a lot of bracha Amen. in your continued work to be an advocate for what you do. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much.